Hello YouTube. In today's video, we are going to be going over the Baker Incident Report. It is a file that is shown in Resident Evil Village that discusses the events after Resident Evil 7 Biohazard, but prior to the events of Resident Evil Village. The Baker Incident Report is a report written by Zoe Baker, as we know and it shows the events following the Baker incident. Zoe states that Ethan and Mia were able to shed some light on the events, but it was covered up and they were in her words, vanished. She says that she knows, in quotations, someone or something powerful acting behind the scenes. According to the Dolby Daily, dated July 22nd, 2017, it states a family of four is found dead in Dolby. Their names included Jack, Marguerite, Lucas, and surprisingly Zoe's name is on that list. The details were unknown, only knowing that they were found dead on July 21st, 2017. Also, Deputy Sheriff Dave Anderson was missing since the 19th, according to Deputy Sheriff Riley Whiteford, who visited the Baker's residence around the time of his disappearance. On the social media posts dated July 22nd, 2017, one person claimed, that thing with the dead family, wasn't that where that giant black monster was? Someone else also mentions incidents where Jack was also having problems with people and also getting into a lot of fights. This shows that the Baker family was not going unnoticed by fellow inhabitants. This is going to be explored more later. Next is a transcript from a complaint to the county sheriff's office. In quotations, I don't believe it. It's been two days already, but you haven't reported anything else. Was it murder? An accident? Suicide? And what is with the National Guard sealing the place off? What are y'all hiding? Very little information was reported after the incident was discovered, which led to a lot of rumors and speculations. The Bakers and their home was isolated. There was also a lot of public pressure for information. Zoe says in quotations, I admit that at the time I was being held in quarantine by a certain organization and couldn't see any of the news for myself. She continues, They finally allowed me to watch TV and after a few days I was flabbergasted by the stark difference between the reports and reality. This would start her suspicion towards the cover-up and fuel her to expose the truth. Now we are getting into the portion of the cover-up. Into the recently reported Dolby Daily, they state, On July 30th, 2017, Sheriff's Office say Baker family killed by natural gas. To follow up the news on July 21st, 2017, Dolby County Sheriff's Office states, It is highly likely that their deaths were caused by hydrogen sulfide leak. They mention the surrounding area being wetlands and that combined with the concentration of pollution, could have had a help in leading a buildup of toxic gas. The leak had been blocked, yet authorities sealed off the area in order to prevent any further accidents. They released a list of victims, and it goes in the following order. For the list of deceased, Jack Baker, Marguerite Baker, Lucas Baker, Zoe Baker, Dave Anderson, Clancy Javis, Andre Sticklin, and Peter Walken. On the injured list, Ethan Winters and Mia Winters. Going back to the early reports made by surrounding civilians, they were more made following the recent reports of news. This includes, in quotations, toxic hydrogen sulfide gas, they're kidding right? Another reporting they heard everything, claiming the government is up to something, with another also stating about the black monster, to which they may be referring to the boss fight with Evelyn at the end of Resident Evil 7 Biohazard. They also provided a satellite photo of the shipwreck. One media post mentions Raccoon City and notices how a lot of conspiracy theorists were posting online around that time in 1998. This further proves the other residents had an idea of what's going on and has a realism of the way the internet would react to the news on this spectrum. Zoe then shows an interview made with Sally Baldwin, a professor of geological scientists at Minden University. The interviewer questions if she disagrees with the report from the sheriff's office, to which she replies, We can't rule it out completely, but it's very unusual, all things considered. She mentions that to form hydrogen sulfide, there would be volcanic activity aiding it, to which she adds on, saying, Dolby has no volcanic activity anywhere in the area. Her research from 1998 shows proof of it. This racks my head thinking the year being the same as the Raccoon City incident, and a note found in the attic of Lucas's room saying that the house was made by George Trevor Industries. The same man from Raccoon City who supposedly found his demise in Spencer's mansion in the Arclay Mountains. Zoe turns the attention back onto her. She is completely shocked by the news, but more importantly, she is scared to see her name on the list, thinking her assassination could be seconds away. Instead, they give Zoe a new name and let her go for her own safety. She mentions her attempts to contact Ethan and Mia to at least thank them, but they had disappeared. 
Zoe immediately changes her focus onto the BSAA that knew about the Winters' whereabouts. She mentions, thanks to my detainment in their facility, I have a pretty good idea of who their members are, which could be a big plot point in perhaps Resident Evil 9 as we dive deeper into this report. She says she was very persuasive when it came to asking about the organization and top secret documents, which could tie into Resident Evil 8 on how Chris knows about Miranda and a document later in the file. The next portion we have in the Baker Incident Report is called The Hidden Truth. According to the magazine Inspector, which is the same magazine to do an interview with Sally Baldwin, catches Zoe's attention by having a title that was Secret Meeting Between the Sheriff and International Organization. The author, Edgar McClintock, states that one of their reporters had unearthed evidence of a meeting between the BSA and Dolby Sheriff Coleridge. This would further raise suspicions. Edgar mentions that he tried to get a statement from the Sheriff's office, but they refused. Now Zoe provides us with a document labeled BSA Investigations Department, Final Report on the Baker Incident. This document shows the real truth of what happened. As we also find out in the release game of Resident Evil 7, the incident started out by an accidental contamination of a bioweapon known as Evelyn the little girl Mia was taking care of on transport to the facility. The document continues into things we find out in the last acts of Resident Evil 7. The BSAA also claims that this document is for employees with Class B clearance and above. They state that Evelyn was originally created in a Munich research facility by the international crime syndicate The Connections, which expands into Resident Evil 8 and Mother Miranda. The BSAA had a team to go destroy Evelyn to no success, and to which Evelyn escaped. The Connections took matters into their own hands and transferred her to America along with Mia Winters. It continues to talk about the events we explore with Mia's portion in Resident Evil 7. They threaten by saying if the failed assassination of Evelyn was to ever come to light, that the BSAA would have to be the ones responsible. That is why they needed a cover-up so that the BSAA wouldn't get called out. Next document Zoe shows us goes into detail about the E-Series Mutamycete. It states that the Mutamycete is similar to that of Cladosporium, aka Black Mold, and has high reproductive properties. It is like a parasite, infecting the cells and rewriting the DNA of its host. Evelyn was made through implantation of Mutamycete into a human embryo. She was driven by an instinct to create a family. Due to an innate defect in her chromosomes, her cells reproduce rapidly causing her to age and die. Now we are on to a big important part of this inclusion that involves the connections. The document states their organizational structure is unknown, however the BSAA states to be aware of their known actions on a global level. In recent years it says that they have been particularly active in Eastern Europe. In addition to what we find out about Mother Miranda in Chris's act of Resident Evil 8, it shows most of their activities appear to revolve around creating or selling bioweapons, Evelyn being one of them. And to a man and an idea for a future video, The Connections was founded by Brandon Bailey. He was a right hand man to Oswald E. Spencer. In this document, it states that his current status and location is unknown, which is weird considering that his name is in a note in Resident Evil 5 about level security employees being wiped out, with his name on top of level 9 marked as deceased. Bailey and Spencer differed in visions, so he branched off with the goal of commercial gain. Zoe brings it back to her and her utter disbelief with the cover-ups. She also states she's caught wind of Ethan and Mia's location. She begins with a transcript of an interview with Ethan and Mia. Ethan's being. Shall we begin then? Ethan. Ethan Winners. I am a systems engineer. How many times do I have to do this? When are you going to let us go? Our interviews until now have been necessary to conclude if you had any ulterior motives. Now we understand that you were just an innocent victim in this whole incident. So, you're going to let us go? Yes, but we have one condition. What's that? We would like you and your wife to remain under our supervision. In exchange, we will provide you with a new home, a new country. What are you saying? You want us to take on new identities? Wait, a new country? You want us to move to another country? To a lovely country in Eastern Europe, to be precise. Europe? You've got to be kidding me. Why the hell would we- You are both witnesses to what happened. There is a certain criminal organization who is looking for you. We are doing this for your protection. Think of it more like witness protection. But all the way in Europe, without any say? You can forget everything you experienced here, start a new life. It's better for both of you that way. There's no way we can forget everything that happened. I want to talk to Mia about this. Let me talk to Mia. That concludes Ethan's interview. Now on to Mia's. 
According to our examinations, you are mostly free of the mold now, Mia. Have you? Did you tell him about my past? No, as a sign of appreciation for your cooperation, BSA has not divulged your involvement with the connections. I just want to return to a normal life with Ethan, to forget everything. That concludes both interviews. Zoe continues on by feeling relief on her shoulders from knowing they're in Europe. She couldn't figure out exactly where since the BSA has tight security. Two years go by with no progress. She shows an update in her new life about becoming a rookie reporter for a small newspaper in New Orleans. She says that the Baker incident is anything but gone from people's minds. She also goes on by saying she got a letter from Mia Winters. Mia's letter includes, Hey, how are you doing? It's been a while, hasn't it? BSA won't let us send any emails or letters, but I gave this directly to an employee to give to you, so it should be safe our location is still hidden. I've always wanted to tell you how thankful I am. Ethan and I would have died in the house if it hadn't been for you. It must have been hard to fight all alone for so long, so thank you. I can't tell you where we are, but we're safe and happy. I feel like we finally settled down into our new life. The house BSA gave us is huge. I don't know what to do with it all. Oh, that reminds me. There's a reason I wanted to write you. Ethan and I had a baby. I included a picture of her with this letter. I warn you, she's so cute. We named her Rosemary. Isn't it such a wonderful name? I hope you can come and see her someday. Ethan wants to see you too. I've learned all kinds of local dishes. I'm sure you'll like them. No need to reply. I'm sure we'll meet again someday. Take care of yourself, okay? Sincerely, Mia Winters. Zoe states that she was more than happy to receive that letter and couldn't hold back her tears. When she went to close the mailbox, she spotted another envelope. This one was embossed with the BSA logo, the sender unknown. It contains the following. BSA HQ, warning letter to Chris Redfield. Chris, we are growing concerned with your recent activity. According to recent reports, you have taken personal control of the elite unit, the Hound Wolf Squad, without permission. And you've accessed a number of top secret documents also without permission. What the hell are you doing? What are you and your squad doing in Eastern Europe? Who the fuck is this Miranda that keeps popping up in your correspondences? What's with the investigation into the Winters family? You've been very critical of the BSAA since the Baker incident. You might be one of the founding original 11, but I cannot continue to let you run around unchecked. So I will repeat myself, what the hell are you doing? Signed, BSAA HQ Investigations. There was one thing scribbled on the back of this, it's not over. Zoe concludes that all of this was purely for her own reference and doesn't intend to send it out to the general public. She states that she is doing this for her family and that someday she'll give Ethan and Mia her thanks directly. She concludes by saying, My name is Zoe Baker, a survivor of this tragedy. This concludes the Baker Incident Report. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please hit that subscribe button for future videos like this, and like if you enjoyed and comment as well. And have a good day.